Hello guys, this is Joana Saeira with a bonus video offered with our online course Dancing Mohammed Abdel Wahab, Modern Egyptian Dance with Soul. This course is happening at Joana Saeira's online dance school and it will be soon available in the recorded version like all our courses at our school. So if you want to join us live, this is the moment. If not, you can subscribe to the course in the recorded version and enjoy all the recorded classes in your own time. This video that I'm offering with the course is about a very complex and very polemic subject, which is modern Egyptian dance. What is modern Egyptian dance to start with? So what I'm going to tell you in this bonus video is a mix of my own experience as a professional oriental dancer for almost 20 years of my life uh, in Egypt and around the world. So it's a very wide um, perspective that I've been gathering. It's also a mix of my own visions and my own perspectives on Egyptian dance according not only with my professional experience, but my character and my sensibility and all the things that I've studied uh, alongside my work. So this is not the universal truth as everything that I do in my work is a mix between the experience and the information I've been gathering in my own vision, my own perspective. You are free to agree, to disagree, to take whatever you feel uh, fits you from this video, okay? So we start with modern Egyptian dance. Let's try to define it in a few words, which is very difficult. I consider the mother of Egyptian dance, someone who was called Badia Masabni. Anyone who has studied a little bit of Egyptian dance history knows exactly who I'm talking about and will eventually understand why I call her the mother of modern Egyptian dance. She was the first lady, first one who saw Egyptian dance in a professional stage art form, okay? She was the first one who put oriental dance in a context that was professional in a wider sense of the term, that was professional in a more um, respectful, dignified, structured way. Until Badia Masabni came along, there were Awalem, there were Hawazi. They were working each ones in their own side, in their own way. Hawazi working publicly anywhere people would pay them basically and a woman working in the women's quarters inside of homes for women mostly so there was no venue there was no context for professional oriental dance for someone who would want to pay a ticket and see a professional show but the Masavni was the first one who made that possible and she created the concept of choreography for the stage she created the concept of well-organized groups of dancers who were presenting something professional for a paying audience. Um, she was the one who hired classical ballet teachers to train the dancers and give them a little bit more of movement awareness, space awareness, awareness um, polishment of movement, harmony of movement. She was the one who had the vision that this raw dance that was practiced in non-professional environments could be transformed into a formal art form that people would pay for in a, in a dignified context to watch. Basically, this is the two reasons I indicate um, to justify my choice of Badia Masabni as the mother of modern Egyptian dance. But there are others. This video is not about Badia Masabni, but I could not let her out. Now, after Badia Masani, there are many other stages of development of Egyptian dance uh, until we find Egyptian dance nowadays and we observe what's going on around the world until we get where we are. And where are we? Where are we nowadays? So in all my years of career uh, in Egypt, I was very unaware of what people were doing outside of Egypt. I was not interested. I was interested in rescuing the roots of Egyptian dance. So obviously my focus was in my daily work, in my musicians, in my, in my environment, in my audience, in my work. 
But once I started to get invited to travel, to teach and perform and lecture outside of Egypt, then I started to see what is going on outside of my Egyptian cocoon. And I noticed very wonderful things, very positive changes and very negative changes. As with everything, evolution is made of setbacks and leaps forward. It is not a straight line. We don't evolve in a straight line, okay? We don't go up the mountain in one line. We go up, then we go back, then we stop, then we go up, then we go back, we fall a little more back, and then we go up, and then we stop. It's a very dynamic process. So the Egyptianness we know nowadays that we call modern Egyptianness is a product, not only of several phases of evolution, of the Egyptian dance, but also of the present moment that is very much related with what's going on in the world, okay? So Egyptian dance became adopted by the Western world in the last, let's say, 15 years, 10 to 15 years. And festivals have sprung all over the world. I'm a, a proof of that. I'm very grateful to all the event organizers, all the festivals organizers. My work has been around the world because of them. So this is a wonderful thing, and it's a wonderful thing that foreigners took charge somehow of this art form and gave it a, a respect and a dignity that Egyptians so far have not been able to give to it, okay? So this is a very good development. We have pushed the boundaries and we have pushed the level up to a point that Egyptian dancers are stepping up as well. They're getting better at choreography. They're getting better at technique. They're getting better at teaching. They are getting more professional. And this has a lot to do with the pressure that foreigner dancers have made upon them in Egypt and outside of Egypt. This is wonderful. And we Westerners can congratulate ourselves for that, okay? But what we did of negative is also worth mentioning. Although we have developed the dance into a, a modern language that is varied and dynamic and presented in big stages all over the world, Although we have given it uh, a place of dignity in the arts form, although we have created schools and um, festivals and competitions, that's another subject. Although we have given it all our love and all our respect, the truth is most of the Western dance world ignores the core of Egyptian dance. There has been this willingness, this desire to modernize and to dignify the dance, but without a serious, deep knowledge of what the core of the dance is. So along with these improvements, many important things have been lost, okay? And what are those important things? Those important things are hard to put into words. It is very hard to address the subjects that I've been addressing at Jerome Sanders Online Dance School and and whenever I teach, because these are subjects that have never been put into words. So I'm kind of finding a vocabulary for it, but here we go. So what is not present nowadays, and I think it's been lost, and I think it's ruining the perspective of a brilliant modern Egyptian dance is, first of all, the lack of knowledge of the culture. Many dancers jump into Egyptian dance without knowing the culture and without being interested in the culture. I'm not saying that all Oriental dancers should move to Egypt and work there. That's not realistic. I'm not saying that all Oriental dancers should know the Arabic language so that they get deep into the songs. Of course, that's the ideal situation, but then again, it's not realistic. I cannot say I wish all Oriental dancer would work you know, with uh, an Egyptian orchestra for Egyptians for five or six or seven or eight years in a row as I did, because I know this is not realistic. Most dancers, 99.9% .9 will never have this experience. So there is a side of knowledge of the culture that I know probably you will not have. And that is okay, that is fine. But there are other ways of trying to make the distance between you and this culture a little bit shorter. There are books, there are videos, there are trips you can do to Egypt. You know, you, you don't need to move there, you don't need to, to work there, but at least you can go on a vacation there and take some dance classes, go watch some shows, speak with people, observe the culture, get immersed in the culture. You know, there are documentaries about Egypt. There are good schools, you know, like our school, but it's not the only one. There are good schools. 
there are good uh, online classes, festivals, there's so much information. So the first thing we gotta do in order to create a modern Egyptian dance that is uh, filled with meaning and with purpose and respectful of what Egyptian dance stands for is knowing the culture as much as possible, okay? Then we cannot forget that Egyptian dance score is very much connected with the heart. It's very much connected with the soul. It's very much connected with our internal world. It is not a competition oriented dance. It is not a clone, a copy machine oriented dance. It is not an aggressive, fast, furious kind of dance. And this is what we see nowadays. I've been working around the world, as I mentioned, not only as a teacher and performer, but also as a judge in competitions, in the biggest competitions in the world, in Russia, in Argentina, in, the, in China, in the countries where the communities are uh, perhaps the biggest and the strongest in terms, at least of quantity, quantity of students and school and everything. And I was very pleased with a lot of the things that I saw, and I was very sad with a lot of the things that I saw. And this sadness comes mostly because the heart, the feeling, the emotion, the humanity is practically gone. The dance has become a very well-developed gymnastic. Okay, this is part of the modernization. People add more movements. They add more complexity. They create choreographies that are more developed. And that's wonderful. That is beautiful. But I ask, where is the heart? Nobody is leaving the dance. Everybody is exhibiting movements. Everybody is exhibiting skills. Everybody is competing with an imaginary opponent or with a real opponent. Everybody stands there doing a dance space as if they were being judged by someone and taking a prize for something. Instead of experiencing the music from a place of love, and purity, you know, it's like someone loving someone else to receive something in return or loving coming from a place of I want that love back. So you're not really giving anything. You're pretending to give something to get something back. May that be the applause, may that be the approval, may that be more views on your YouTube channel, may that be more likes, you know, there is this general tendency, and it is not only in Egyptian dance, it's in every, everything, every area. This tendency to forget why we're doing what we're doing, why Egyptian dance makes sense. You know, can we modernize it and allow it to lose its soul? Can we modernize it to a point that it is not Egyptian dance anymore? It's a very well developed gymnastic, but it is not Egyptian dance anymore. So, what is modernization? What do we mean by modern Egyptian dance? Is it an empty set of movements that have been multiplied and made complex? Is it a more complicated choreography? What is modern Egyptian dance? And what makes Egyptian dance Egyptian? This is a really tough question, right? I believe once more that what makes Egyptian dance Egyptian is the ability to communicate your soul through your movement. It's the ability to listen to a song, bring it in, keep it in your heart, and be able to move from that point. And it looks easy when I speak about it. It's not easy to do it. But this is, I believe, the proposal of Egyptian dance, classical or modern. And I don't believe in a dance, in any dance, that is purely technical. I don't believe in a dance that is purely movement, physical movement. I don't believe in a dance that claims to be modernizing itself, looking more and more like a machine, looking less and less like a human being. Egyptian dance is human. Egyptian dance is divine. So we have to elaborate whatever we elaborate on it in terms of movements and complexity without losing the sight of what really matters and what really matters. It's bringing our human and our divine dimensions into the dance. Every time I saw true Egyptian dance, I got goosebumps. That's the Egyptian dance I'm talking about. Of course, it's beautiful to have a beautiful, complex choreography, 
but everybody is doing it and it's not so hard. What is hard is to communicate something from heart to heart with that choreography. What is hard, what is hard, sorry, is to reach from within. It's to bring the movements from within and touch other people with that truth. Touch other people with that vulnerability. Touch other people with the magic of true emotion. Touch other people with the magic of true love pouring from ourselves. That's not a matter of movements. It is not a matter of complex choreographies. It's a matter of personal development as well. This is why I teach personal development everywhere I go and at Joanna Sanders Online Dance School as well. It is not possible to create a modern Egyptian dance without a modern oriental dancer who is aware of herself or himself, who is personally developed to the point that he or she is not dancing anymore for vanity. It's not dancing anymore for a prize. It's dancing from the soul to be more human, to remind others what it feels to be more human. In this course, Dancing Mohammed Dad Wahab, what we're doing, aside from working in a beautiful choreography from a music I love very much, Ifan, we are reminding ourselves what is modern and what is eternal. What is the difference between modern Egyptian dance and empty Egyptian dance? How can we keep modernizing and improving and moving into the future with Egyptian dance without losing its essence, without losing its core, without losing the purpose of this beautiful human and divine art form? I want you to consider these questions. You are welcome to join us at Joanna Saida's Online Dance School. Comment and share this video. See all the information about this course and other courses in the description of this video. I will see you soon, guys. I love you very much. I hope you got the message here and you apply it as much as you can, as much as possible. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. But you want to say that in one school <laughs> or somewhere around the world. Mwah.